This is also why I'm now very pleased to be able to welcome the head of the LGTB rights programs, Boris Dietrich, from Human Rights Watch. Hello, Boris. Hi. So, as mentioned, welcome. You, you work for Human Rights Watch. What exactly do you do there? Uh, we are a very big international human rights organization. We work in more than 90 countries in the world. We have about 350 staff members. And the core of our work is that we investigate human rights abuses, we expose uh, the ones who perpetrate them, and then we try to make a change. 90 countries. I suppose you also work in Germany. What does your work entail here? Well, as a matter of fact, we do have an office here in Berlin, and I'm proud to say that uh, I now work in our headquarters in New York, but I will move to Berlin, and per the 1st of May, I will be working here in the office. And from Berlin, we actually uh, cover the rest of the world. Uh, so, for instance, my work will bring me to countries, neighboring countries like Russia, uh, the mayor already said that in Russia there is a law pending in the Duma which makes it impossible to speak about homosexuality. They call it propaganda and the mayor could be arrested for what he said and you and I as well. Mm. How is the situation of LGBT people in the world? I mean, if you can generalize it like that. Well, there is a mixed bag. So I talked about Russia. We now saw a part of a documentary born this way about Cameroon. And in Cameroon, for instance, there was a young man, Jean-Claude, he sent a text message, an SMS to another man, he fell in love with that man, and he was arrested and thrown in jail for three years for simply sending a text message. His lawyer, we saw one of the lawyers, um, was threatened to death. His children, his wife, had to flee the country, and the police doesn't want to do anything about the ones who want to kill the lawyer but when you send a message of love, you end up in prison. So there are bad examples also within the EU. Lithuania, mm -hmm. for instance, country close by. The gay movement wants to organize a gay pride in Lithuania, and the municipality says, we don't want your people on the streets of Vilnius, in the center of the city. So we have a lot of work to do, but of course there are also good examples. What are the good examples? We want to hear some good news as well. I don't want to depress everybody. So a good example is that the United Nations really in five, six years time has taken up this issue. And for instance, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is traveling around the world and he's a staunch supporter of LGBT rights as human rights. And that's really amazing, really amazing. And actually, I would like to give one more positive example. Um, in a lot of countries, um, marriage equality is being introduced at the moment. I recently came from New Zealand. You started that, by the way, right? Well, you... thanks, yes. Um, in 1994, uh, I was I the think first... that's actually an applause for you for doing that. Well, first I should tell it because they yes. don't know. Okay, okay. They don't know. But in 1994, I became the first openly gay member of parliament in the Netherlands uh, who wanted to speak out uh, in favor of LGBT rights. So I proposed marriage equality, and it took some years. But in 2001, the Netherlands became the first country in the world to have marriage equality. And um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> now also the United Kingdom, France, New Zealand, Uruguay, all kind of countries are introducing these laws. So hopefully, once I'm here for Human Rights Watch in Berlin, I can support people who want to introduce marriage equality here in Germany. How do you see the situation in our country? How do you see, how do you see the rights LGBT people have here in this country, in Germany? Well, of course, if you compare Germany and several other European countries to a country like Russia or Cameroon, it's completely different. But still, we shouldn't forget, although we are here all together and it's a wonderful energy in the room, still at this moment in Germany, there are young gay men, young lesbian women, transgender people who feel so lonely 
and sometimes even commit suicide. And when you look at the numbers of young people committing suicide, LGBT people are unfortunately overrepresented. So we still need to work on those kind of issues as well. And We talked earlier, and I'm sure a lot of people in this room know how to speak up, but I'm sure there's a lot of viewers maybe who don't know what to do to show solidarity. So what, what can we do? What are the easy things that we can do in, in our everyday life? Well, the easiest thing is when you are in the S-Bahn or the U-Bahn or at work or in school, and when you hear a homophobic or transphobic remark, speak up and say, this is unacceptable, we don't want this. That helps and inspires young people who do not dare to come out of the closet. At Another example would be, of course, to, um, to give donations to an organization like Human Rights Watch or Amnesty International or Transgender Europe. There are many organizations working on these issues and we give a voice to the people that really need to have a voice. So that will be another uh, possibility. And we thank you for that. So thank you very much for coming here tonight, for speaking up, for discussing with us. And uh, a warm round of applause for Boris Dietrich from Human Rights Watch. Well, thank you very much. There's one thing, just one sentence. Sure. There's one sentence I would like to say to everybody who thinks, what can I do? I can only say the future is not in front of us, but the future is inside of us, and we can make a better future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Boris. Thank you so much.